who, in your mind, who's the starting other guard? First of all, did you say Obre Jr.? Come on, bro. It's Obre Jr. Man, get it together. First of all, you got to get the names right. Okay. You get your names right say. for all these stats? Well, you first you of all, right? you know, Anthony wants the big, everyone's got the big three. Anthony wants, like, the big ten. <laughs> five, so five would do. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me a starting five. What do you, what do you think? Like, okay, you know, okay. All right, stop the shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Matter of Stats podcast. You can see the three amigos are all here with you. Uh, gentlemen, what's going on? Happy Taco Tuesday. I will be, I will be eating my tacos right now, but uh, uh, the boss man here, he's banned us from any kind of uh, uh, working and eating. So, Billy, how you doing? I'm great. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm good. Glad to always be here, of course. And uh, we want to remind everybody that we appreciate you guys listening to the Matter of Stats podcast, and we hope that you check us out everywhere you get your podcasts and check out our YouTube, our IG, and our Twitter. All right, well, let's uh, let's jump right in because we got a few things to discuss this week. Uh, a couple NFL things. Uh, the NFL voted unanimously to approve the sale of the Washington Commanders. So congrats to our boy Magic as he's part of that ownership group. Fine. Now got now got his hand in the NFL. Also, in some other selling news in the NBA, the Board of Governors they approved the sale of the Charlotte Hornets uh, to an ownership group uh, led by Rick Schnall. So Michael Jordan's uh, reign as the owner of the Hornets will uh, soon be coming to an end here. In some boxing news, undefeated fighters Terence Crawford and Errol Spence Jr. are set to collide this Saturday at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. It's a fight that, as Yahoo Sports puts it, on paper ranks among the greatest welterweight matches in the sports history. So believe me, you are not going to want to miss this fight. Uh, And also, in some soccer news, the Women's World Cup is underway. Um, and the uh, women's U.S. national team, they won their opening match uh, last week against Vietnam. So uh, give that um, a little uh, little watch and support uh, Team USA. Gentlemen, that's our headlines this week. What do you think? Uh, definitely support uh, the women in, out there uh, in the World Cup. They got a big matchup on Wednesday against Netherlands. And uh, so that's going to be a huge match. That's probably going to be their toughest one in their group. So uh, mm-hmm. everyone, make sure to cheer them on. It's going to be on at 6 p.m. Wednesday night on Fox. So, uh, yeah, make sure you guys cheer them on. I can't wait for this uh, Errol Spence, uh, Terrence Crawford fight this Saturday. Uh, I'm going to be watching. I'm going to be on the edge of my seat. I really think that this is going to be one of those fights that is you know, talked about 30, 40 years from now. Um, you know, you're, you're talking about two of the best pound for pound fighters in the world, uh, for all the belts at welterweight undisputed sign me up, man. I'm ready. So it's going to be a good one. Hopefully I'll be able to get to watch some of it. My daughter's got a playoff game that night. So, uh, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. You want to give a prediction or no? Um, sure. Uh, I think that, um, I think it's going to go the distance. It'll be a 12 round fight. I could see Errol Spence edging out Crawford by a hair, maybe by a round. I can see there being controversy. I wouldn't even be surprised if it ends in a draw. I mean, I, I, I can't remember the last time I've read about a fight that was so close. Like, the experts, like, really can't pick it. It's, like, right down the middle. Uh, two undefeated guys. Um, it's it's, it's going to be hard to call. So, uh, But I want to see Errol Spence win. He's the slight, you know, he's the bigger fighter. He's uh, the younger fighter. He's been fighting at welterweight a little bit longer. Um, and he has three of the four belts. So I'm going with Errol Spence, but it's not going to be a walk in the park. Not, not by any stretch of the imagination. So there, you, there it is. There you have it. There right. you have it. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> All right. Well, um, let's uh, jump into a little Laker talk. Not a lot of big stuff happening uh, 
in the NBA right now, especially in Laker land as we're, you know, af- end of summer league, end of free agency. We got a gap before training camp starts here. So not anything like uh, earth shattering, but we did want to, uh, you know, just kind of kick the tires here and get a few things started before training camp opens and get your guys' opinion on the roster specifically of the new acquisitions. Who do you think is going to make the biggest impact this season for the Lakers? You kind of changed that up a little, didn't you? <laughs> no. No. It sounded like you did. Unless I, was paying I said acquisition instead of addition. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Stop using sorry, these big sorry words, that man. screwed you up. <laughs> these big words. Uh, I'm tired. I'm not ready for all that. Okay, who's it going to be, Billy? Who, who's it going to be? Nah, you go. <laughs> Figueroa. <laughs> um, Remember, I'm, Wendy I'm gonna... Gabriel's not on the roster anymore. We went over that a few weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, I'm going to go with uh, Vincent. Just because, you know, as Anthony says, we always need more shooting, more offense. And, uh, I, you know, I think it, obviously it's going to be a competition between him and D'Lo. You know, who's going to start and get more minutes and stuff like that. But uh, I honestly think just because of what D'Lo showed us in the playoffs last year, I think Vincent's going to get more minutes whether he starts or not. And he adds, you know, he adds a lot of athleticism, shooting. Um, He's played with some in a great organization with Miami. So he's got some experience with them. So I think he's going to be the one to make the biggest impact. Hmm. Um, I mean, I feel like as it stands right now, obviously, you know, we're still um, looking to fill another spot. But I think, as you know, as it stands right now, I would probably say Jackson Hayes. I, I think that Gabe Vincent could definitely have an impact probably more in the postseason as, you know, that that's kind of like the D-low insurance policy, I guess, you know, because uh, right. as we as we all saw, you know, I mean, d you never know what could happen in the postseason with him. So, you know, Gabe right. Vincent is there to maybe back him up. But I think as far as like for the season as a whole. Um, I think that Jackson Hayes, uh, you know, is is going to be important to help us get to the postseason um you know right now that's the big that's the big question mark is that is that center position you know getting maybe a third backup are we going to start them next to you know we're going to start them next to ad i think if ad and lebron are missing games this year you're going to see jackson hayes get more minutes Mm -hmm. um you know he's easily a guy that could get a double double on any night uh for us and um you know he's a young guy you know he he spent his first four years uh in new orleans shout out my b team the pelicans but um (laughs) you know he he, he, i could see him maybe having a chip on his shoulder didn't have the greatest season last season um and maybe he comes in with something to prove this season so um i think he's going to be key i think it's going to be important for him to get off to a good start and uh, be consistent this season so um I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Jackson Hayes. I'm not hating on that. He's out there. I saw some videos of him. He's out there putting work in the gym and, and yep. working on stuff that you know he needs to work on his weaknesses and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm not hating on that. Uh, yeah, and you're right. He might have that Malik Monk, like you said, chip on his shoulder, <clears throat> right? Coming in high draft pick, still young, vet man, wanting to prove that he's that he's still that he's not a bust, so to speak. Yeah. Um, Billy, I, while I do, I like Gabe Vincent um, simply because I think he's going to be a little bit of an upgrade over Schroeder just because I think he's going to be more consistent. I think yeah. we all like Schroeder, but the big thing with Schroeder yeah. is he was very up and down, right? He would True. come in and be have a great game, and then he'd kind of you know be irrelevant. So I think Gabe Vincent will be a little more consistent from night to night. But my pick is Cam Reddish. Um, oh. obviously I was wondering if one of you were going to say that. <laughs> well, look, obviously, yeah, I like Cam Reddish. I mean, I, I've been, you've you been know, lobbying him for, I've been forever. lobbying, right. For him to be on this team for the past two seasons, because I just felt like he was a good fit and he was a cheap get. So I think he's still a good fit and he was a cheap get. He's on a vet men, but you know, he gets a, a lot of knock. I think so far in his young career about not living up to the expectations of being that high draft pick, but at least he's been consistent. His first three years with Atlanta, he averaged just over 11 points a game. He averaged like a little over a three a game and a little over a steal a game. 
And then last year for Portland in just, I think he played just 20 games there for the Blazers, but did the same thing, gave him over 11 points, gave him over a three, gave him over a steal. And I think that's something that's been lacking from this team. Obviously we've talked about the wing depth and the length, but specifically the, a three and D wing guy, um, I think has been lacking since we lost guys like Kuzma and KCP. And I did a quick little comparison, just the year that we won the championship, you know, Kuzma was giving us 12 points and two threes a game and half a steal a game. So I think that Cam Reddish, if you just roll in those those numbers that he's basically done his whole career, 11, little over one, little over a steal, I think, you know, it could be a good fit there to be, you know, replace, you know, that style of player that we haven't had in a couple of years. So I think that he'll be a good fit alongside uh, some of the some of the you know added players we've had, especially with LeBron and AD. You know, plus there's going to be no pressure on him, right? Now he's coming in off the bench, you know, just like Jackson Hayes might have that chip on his shoulder, and he won't have to be expected to start or live up to you know the lottery pick hype. So I'm excited to see what he can bring to the team. Um, I, I, it's funny how you mentioned the pressure thing. It, it it's LA. You know, every time we get a player there, no matter what your what your uh, role is on the Lakers, mm-hmm. it seems to affect a player when they first come in. So yeah. um, they might feel some kind of pressure. You never know how that's going to work. But um, yeah, yeah, I mean, there's a ton of upside, but, you know, the pressure thing, that's another, you know. Yeah. And to and to piggyback on that, I was going to kind of say something similar, Billy. Um, you know, I I kind of, you know agree with you, Anthony, with the Cam Reddish thing, but at the same time, like, when it comes to the pressure, I mean, he's already had three opportunities in, you know, three mm-hmm. on three teams that, you know, didn't have all the pressure in the world, maybe New York at most, but, you know, to mm-hmm. be on Atlanta, to be on Portland, uh, yeah. to play for New York and not really, like, show out like your, you know, pick selection suggests, uh, that's the only thing that kind of has me iffy about him. And, you know, you, co- you compared him a, a week or two ago to – you know, uh, Rui and how we got Rui and, you know, now we got Phil Handy working with Rui. Rui kind of had like a breakout, you know, last season. Mm-hmm. But you have to remember, Rui's played all four years, you know, with one team, with Washington. Mm-hmm. Um, so when when you take him from an organization like Washington and then you put him with elite, you know, coaches in L.A., and he does something, you shouldn't mm-hmm. be surprised. But if you're a guy like Cam Reddish, who's kind of bounced around to different teams, teams that really don't have a ton of pressure, then what's really the excuse there, you know? So I'm not saying like he can't come here and, you know, um, the coaching staff can get him to turn it around. Maybe, maybe he can. I would love that. You know, I, I like Cam Reddish. He's, you know, former Dookie. Shout out my Dookie Blue Devils, you know. Um, <laughs> I, I would like for that to work Shout out. Shout out to my G but, team. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, we'll just have to see. So, uh, yeah, but uh, I, I like it. Yeah. Y'all pick somebody different and, uh, you know, that was cool. So Yeah, no, and I think you guys make a fair point about the pressure. Uh, and you might be right. Maybe a better way to put it is expectation. The pr- there still might be pressure, but the expectation, I think, for him now is totally different. He's not going to be expected to be that guy, the starter, the the top 10 pick, the, you know, change the culture of the franchise guy. He's just going to get to play yeah. with good with good players. I'm just wondering if, like, in his mind, he's like, this could be my last shot of kind of getting – making it big type of thing. You know what I mean? Like yeah, kind of make real money. Getting, Yeah, exactly. So that could be in the back of his mind too. And, you know, that might affect it, but who knows? It may not. So I yeah. guess, I guess we'll see. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. So, all right. What else we got, boys? Yeah, we, <laughs> you have any fun games for us, Anthony? <laughs> <laughs> hammer, hammer it up. Um, <laughs> Ooh, that's coming back. That one in the- <laughs> yeah, wait for the know. season to start oh man i look forward to it yeah i look forward to the next season um well oh okay so uh yeah so the second part of our pod tonight um you know will actually be uh interviews and video clips um from last week's summertime hustle youth football camp that we attended um as some of you may know uh it's a yearly camp that's put on by uh you know our friend frosty rucker former 13 year nfl vet um and yeah we we had a great time we were out there um you know helping coach the kids you know um teaching them the fundamentals uh prepping them for their their next journey and you know as as athletes um 
but yeah, you know, it was, it was awesome. You know, we got to talk to some of the former uh, and current players, uh, trainers, coaches, you know, and all that good stuff. So uh, if you're listening on an audio platform, uh, that's cool, but definitely make sure that you guys go check out the YouTube channel um, because uh, you know, this, this, this whole episode is a video episode. And then the, the, you know, last part of this with, um, you know, all the clips from football camp are going to be all on video, obviously. So if you're listening on audio, you may just hear like music at times playing here in the last half of this, uh, episode, uh, probably cause we're just showing football clips and stuff. So definitely make sure you guys go, uh, subscribe. That's, uh, at youtube.com forward slash at matter of stats podcast, um, or just search us on YouTube, uh, matter of stats podcast. So, um, but like Anthony alluded to, like Billy and Anthony alluded to here, um, we are going to be taking a break here from the pod for the next couple of weeks. We've got to go get our, our off season Cancun on. So, uh, you know, <laughs> we're going to, uh, you know, we're still going to be active on IG and YouTube and Twitter and all that stuff. But, uh, as far as the audio episodes on Spotify and iTunes, uh, we're going to be, uh, taking a break for about three, four weeks, and then we'll be back with season three. A whole bunch of new games, apparently, you know, so uh, <laughs> new, new, hot, ready to <laughs> new, go. new material, new games, all that good stuff. So uh, with worry, that being, we ain't going nowhere. <laughs> uh, with that being said, you know, again, we appreciate all the support. This is wrapping up season two. Um, you know, definitely make sure you go check us out on IG, Twitter, um, YouTube, and uh, we'll be back at you uh, shortly here with season three. Peace out. Thank you guys. Appreciate all the love. Cheers. What's up, everybody? Anthony from the Matter of Stats podcast here with you. We are at Frosty Rucker's Summertime Hustle Youth Football Camp. And we are here with the great Coach Sheed, who is donating his time and skills and effort here at the camp. Uh, Coach, thanks for joining us. Tell us a little bit about why you're here and, and what, you, what you bring to the table. How are you guys doing? My name is Coach Sheed. Um, I played high school football at Modern Day High School, um, graduated in 2015. Also went on to play college ball up in Idaho State. And we're just out here at Frosty Summertime Hustle for his Stay Ready nonprofit. You know, we got a lot of beautiful young wonderful kids out here you know ready we're just here trying to give back to them and you know give them some of the same um, opportunities that we might not have had as, as youth and um, get them out here active a lot of these kids now you know they playing the video games and watching the phones all day so you know we'll get them out here for a good week you know teach them you know some life lessons as well as get it some physical activity in so I'm just super stoked to be out here and thank you guys for having me on appreciate no, you thank guys. you for the time yeah. we appreciate the you know the effort and, yeah. and your ability to come out here and do your thing and donate your time and um, I know somebody like myself likes it and these kids are gonna have a blast so yes, thank sir. you very much thank you guys we are here with coach Jay walk mr. John Walker one of my most favorite people to talk to at the Summertime Hustle Frosty <laughs> Rutgers Camp. Uh, Coach, thank you, of course, for taking the time. Tell us a little bit about, you know, why you're here and what you what you bring to the table and a little bit about uh, what, what you do. Oh, well, goodness. That's a loaded question. <laughs> I'm not very certain what I bring to the table, <laughs> but why I'm here is simply uh, to fellowship, to fellowship with the, with the upcoming generation of young athletes. Most importantly, to just give back to give back to the game and the sport and the community that has given so much to me. I mean, we're out here in beautiful Tustin, South OC. I mean, this is a beautiful place. And uh, Frosty Rucker, he's a pioneer. He's a pioneer in his community. He's a, he's a, you know, very much not just a Trojan veteran, but a, a community veteran, an NFL veteran. And when, when Frosty calls, you got to answer. So I'm just here to make certain that I do my part, play my small role in just kind of leaving a healthy thumbprint and shaping the future of the next collegiate athletes and top performers who are coming out of this area. So if I could do that, then I'm doing a good job. Well, we always love, you know, we've had you on the pod. We love talking to you. Um, so we're happy that you're here. We're happy that we're here. Yes. And we're happy that you, um, you know, could share a minute of your time and speak to us. So keep keep on fighting the good fight man we love it i appreciate it i appreciate it if you guys don't watch their their podcast consistently you sleep 
you gotta wake up because these folks keep me entertained daily. Every single day, I scroll on my feed to make sure I'm seeing what they got cooking. So, matter of stats, y'all gotta get on it, man. That's This is like certified by Jaywalk, oh, right? Man. I don't give too many people love, but you guys, you guys run a really, really, really great program. Super informative, always uh, entertaining, and it just keeps us, it keeps me in the know from multiple ranges of sports, right? Not just football, but I love what you're doing with the Lakers too. Oh, man. Yeah, man. So, hey, for those of you who want to get involved, my direct message on Instagram is John Walker Pro. Please tap in, see how you can come help out. I mean, look at this beautiful environment. We need more people. We need more advocates to make certain that we're shaping the future. How you doing? This is George with the Matter of Stats podcast. We're here with uh, Coach Troy. Coach, how's it gone the last two days? Uh, how you feeling? Uh, it's gone really well. Uh, a lot of a lot of high energy from the kids. Uh, we're learning our fundamentals and getting better every day. Nice, nice, nice. And uh, tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and uh, where you grew up, how you know Frosty and all that good stuff. Yeah, so I grew up uh, in Fullerton, uh, California, not too far away. Um, you know, went to Servite High School, played there. We won back-to-back uh, -back CIF championships my junior, senior year. My senior, or my junior year, we won state. Um, then from there, I went to Notre Dame, played the national championship in 2012 against Alabama. Uh, then I got drafted by the Arizona Cardinals uh, and was there with Frosty Rucker for about four years, from 2014 to 2018. And I've just kind of remained in touch. I'm here with Coach George, one of the youngest coaches uh, out here today. Um, he's he, he's out here doing this because you know he's been doing it for four years already as a player. So now he's a coach. He's got some gray sprouting in his head. I can see. So, uh, Coach, how you feeling? I'm feeling good today. You know, it's yeah. it's hot, but it's beautiful when you're playing the sport you love. You know. Yeah, it, it definitely is hot. What are the differences between you know being a player the last couple years and now your first year as a coach? I mean, being a coach. I finally see how hard it is for them to control the kids. As, as a player, you're kind of one of the kids trying not to be controlled. Yeah, yeah. So it's different. And as a coach, I feel like it's a struggle, and you got to really find that leader that's going to step up and com help you command the kids. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Kind of a, a full circle moment yeah, for you, yeah. right? Yeah. So, uh, so we're midway through day three. How have things been going out there? It's been good. I know... The little kid's been getting rowdy, <laughs> it's a hard job, but also I've been having fun, you know, teaching, and I feel like teaching is the best way to learn also, Yeah. so I can learn from what I'm teaching. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And tell us about your future aspirations, your main goals, you trying to be a QB out here? Yeah, I'm trying to be the number one quarterback, I'm trying to make it to college, make it to the NFL, hopefully. And that's what I'm really trying to accomplish. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, you got you got a great set of leaders around you uh, with Frosty, Coach Frost, Coach Jay Walk, uh, Coach Troy Nicholas, who was out here. Um, you know, so definitely uh, props to George, the one of the youngest coaches out here uh, at Frosty Rucker's Summertime Hustle Camp. We're here with Coach Ryan Ting. And we want to just take a few minutes of his time to talk about what he does, what he brings to the table, and, and why he's out here. Coach? Thanks for having me. Well, I, I take a very proactive and preventative approach to really hone in and stress and emphasize the focus of tactical, technical training um, from an injury preventative standpoint. So we work um, deceleration, off the ball movement, change of direction, but really being proactive and holistic about um, the recovery side of things, the preventative side of how you perform and play and compete um, so that you're limiting your impact and controlling your body movement as it translates to the field. So we're working on weight distribution. We're big on not trying to defy physics or like gravity. Like a lot of athletes, Michael Jordan, the best athletes that you, you name it, um, they try to defy gravity or they try to defy physics. We embrace physics. We teach fundamentals on how physics translates to movement and how movement and mindset can interact and align so that you're more in control with your motor skills, your motor function, and your dynamic abilities. Well, 
that, that, that's incredible. It sounds like uh, you know what you're doing is not just good work, but really helping uh, educate and, and train you know younger people, younger athletes, so they really get ahead of the curve um, in future generations. So it's awesome. Appreciate it. No, thanks for having me. No, thanks for your time. Fight on. I'm here with Coach Herman Gutierrez. Herman, uh, how you doing? I'm doing great. It's a little hot out here, but it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. We're in the shade now, so we're, we're uh, cooling down. <laughs> but, uh, Herman uh, uh, is a Tustin High alum with myself, Frosty. You know, we all go way back, so it's awesome to, to reconnect and see him out here coaching. Coach, what does it mean to you to be out here with the kids um, and to, you know, give back to the community and all that? Uh, it's, it feels great. You know, I got my kids here. I lived in Tustin uh, the majority of my life. I've done a couple of programs, sports programs here and there, but nothing like this one. This one's by far one of the best that I've been involved with. Um, and it's really good to see my kids in the same city that I grew up in doing activities. Um, and it's really nice to have Frosty uh, put all this together. It's great that he's back in town, just giving back to the community and feels good to be part of it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And, and now that we're kind of getting up there in age and we're sprouting the grays and everything, this camp's kicking our butt, right? It's only three days in. I mean, I feel good. I mean, I'd <laughs> kick it maybe, you know, other He's people. Like, speak for yourself. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it is hot out here. We're putting in work. All the kids are, you know, you know, running us over with, you know, their tackling drills and all that good stuff. But it's it's really good, yeah. And, and, and tell the viewers and the listeners what you bring to the table. What sports did you play? So, um, back in high school, I did play football with Frosty. Uh, I also did uh, track, I did wrestling. Um, a little bit after uh, uh, high school, I did play a little bit of basketball. And then now for the past, uh, I want to say 10, 11 years, I've been doing CrossFit. So, um, so yeah, I'm not as tired out here as some of the other people. So. Yeah, some, of the, <laughs> yeah. some of us other slouches. Well, there you have it from Coach Herman. Coach, we appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time and for being out here. I'm here with Ryan Dyrud with the LA Football Network. Ryan, how you doing? What's up, brother? Doing good. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. How'd you, how'd you feel today went? Went great. It was hot. <laughs> uh, uh, turned the heat up with the kids, too, and you know everyone's out here competing, having fun. It's so great seeing everyone give back to the community and um, just how excited all the kids are to be here. So it's a good day. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Tell the viewers and the listeners a little bit about your podcast, what you covered. Yeah, so I own the LA Football Network, so we cover the four LA teams, obviously the Trojans, and then also the other team across town, the Bruins and the Rams and Chargers, and our podcast is on uh, AM 1090 or the Mightier, uh, ESPN Radio, and we do editorial, social, all that fun stuff, so it's, it's been a blast. Very cool, man, very cool. And just tell, tell the people, what does it mean for you to be out here with the kids, serving the community? Um, Frosty's a good friend of yours, obviously, he's been on the podcast several times, we're fans, we follow you guys, um, so what does it mean to you for, uh, to be out here with the community? It's great. I've been trying to get out here for a few years, so glad I could finally make it out and get down here. And um, yeah, it's just so much fun seeing how much the kids love and seeing all the volunteers and coaches that come out. And you know, Frosty, this is his, this is his element. I tell him all the time, like this is his element where he belongs and, and loves doing it. So it's it's good to be out here finally. We have the pleasure of speaking with uh, Chance Bell, San Diego State's own um, Chance. Thanks for taking the time. We appreciate it. Uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what brings you out to uh, Frosty's camp. My name is Chance Bell. I just got out of college this December, December grad. Um, I was there for six years. I redshirted, then I took the COVID year. Um, I got two degrees while I was there, and I got my master's. I'm actually a colleague with one of Frosty's um, old alumni from uh, Tustin High School, and she mentioned this to me, and I was like, of course, I would love to come out. We plan this months ahead, and um, I'm honored to be out here. It's a blessing to be out here, and, you know, obviously everything that Frosty's done for the game and everything that he's trying to do now for the kids, and um, just be here, help out, volunteer, you know, give back some knowledge that I got, you know, and also just have fun with the kids at the end of the day, most importantly. So you play, so you play a little, little ball, a little football yes, at sir. San Diego State. So what's what's on the the horizon for for Chance? Right now I'm working. I'm taking it day by day. You know I'm training still. I'm working with a former NFL running back, Albert Fan, and um, I'm looking to just take it day by day. I signed with a, a sports agency, and I'm looking to get my name out there. Hopefully I can get my, my foot in the door somewhere, whether it's tier one, tier two, tier three, and just uh, use it as a stepping stone and pursue my dreams every day. And just to be back, you know, can kind of like ground myself. Obviously, like I said, again, help the kids, you know, be back in that moment, kind of like go back to my moment when I was six years old playing and I was a young kid playing when I f first started out. So it's a beautiful thing, and it all comes full circle. And again, I'm just honored and blessed to be here. Yeah. Well, I know uh, it, it's cool to meet you. I know Frosty and the kids, uh, you know, really enjoyed having you. We saw you doing your thing, and you definitely know your stuff. I saw you throw some good balls out there. I appreciate that. I appreciate <laughs> that. Yeah, I got a little competitive out there, actually, you know. And the, these kids know what they're doing, and there's a lot of kids that are really, you know, stepping out and shining, and I'm excited to see them in the future, honestly. Yeah, so, yeah. for sure. For sure. Thanks, man. We appreciate it. Of course. All right. We are here with the 
the people of the hour, the man and the woman that put it all on, Frosty, Alexia, a great week here at the Summertime Hustle once again. Yeah, it's a great week of a lot of hard work. Um, we put our heart and soul into uh, our foundation and, you know, from doing a pickleball tournament all the way uh, segue into our football camp. It's been a heck of an exciting time, retired, but it's for a good purpose. So I'm happy with the way things were, the way things came out and the way these kids uh, uh, responded to all the coaching this week. It's been a great week. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're exhausted. <laughs> but it was worth it. Everyone has been raving about it. We've had everyone come back year after year, so that's why we do it. Well, like we said, it's a great cause. We're, we're blessed that you let us be a part of it, of course, and um, we look forward to next year. Thank you. Rub those hands together. Rub those hands together. Ready, ready. Ready, ready. Break down. Ah! One clap. One clap. Two clap. Two clap. Two clap. Say ah! Two claps say oh. Oh. Two claps say hustle. Hustle. A U S T A E. Hustle. 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 Go to your line. Go to your line. Go to your line. <laughs>